it's a long, tedious process. So I try to just, you know, stay in that one day mindset. I'm just trying to have as much fun and do as much work as I can in that one day and not really look at the what my next week is going to look like because there's a lot of weeks to come before I can really do anything. Well, I mean, I still feel like I got to hold, you know, my end of the bargain and I can't really do that on the field. So I feel like, uh, I mean, I have a lot of expertise. I got some time and I got some time in some, you know, crucial moments and playoff games. And I think I can share some of that, especially with, uh, you know, we got some new guys coming in and it's just fun to hear, like even learn from them, watch what they're doing, watch what, how Darvish goes about his stuff and hearing how he, you know, makes his pitches spin and all these little things I can start piecing together with my game and try to help their game as well. I mean, actually, I mean, I, I don't look at, I don't like looking at the glass half empty. I'm not that kind of guy. So, I mean, the more I'm just looking at what kind of beast we're going to be when I get back and me getting a year under my belt of mastering my craft even more. And I felt like I was just on the cusp of really, you know, reaching my potential and, you know, uh, you know, getting that extra gear to even separate myself even more. So now I just have a year to kind of hone in on that, learn from these other guys. And then I think what everybody in this room, without even being told, the team we're a part of right now is a one, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. This is a once in a lifetime chance you're gonna get in your career. You're not gonna have this much talent in one room for a set amount of years. I don't think anywhere across the league. And I, I mean, it's gonna be. I think it's just like a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I'm just looking forward to getting back and getting back with these guys. And just for fun, if you put on a manager's hat, where would you slot yourself if you were healthy in this rotation? <laughs> Oh man, uh, I, do we, we got number ones? We got num we got seven number ones over here. At least in the a couple in the make <laughs> number ones in the making. So uh, I, I'd say we're all number ones, man. That's a that's a tough one. It's just uh, I just want the ball every day. I'm, I think these guys are the same way. Yeah, no, no I mean, I've, I, that's what I was looking forward to. I was looking forward to like once I saw that everyone was going to be here for a while, and uh, then we even locked up uh, Toddy for you know, 14 years and you, you just see they're really trying to build a winning culture here. And it's something that I think not just I want to be a part of, but you get a sense that I'm sure there's guys all around the league that want to be a part of the Padres right now. We're doing something special. What can so many different pitchers and different styles, different philosophies, how, how, how specifically does that make the collective better? Because, I mean, it's, it, it's the same way that uh, I think a lot of guys will get hurt in their career and they get put in this cookie cutter kind of, you know, mold where you got to be like this or do this. And you got a bunch of guys that do things way differently that have been successful at the top of our games. And now you bring that all together and there's just more pieces where it's like, hey, I'm nothing like this guy, but I'm a lot like this guy. They're two totally different guys, but they're both aces. And now you can learn from, you know, you can pick and choose. So I think that, that mold and that mesh is what's going to create, you know, even better guys coming behind us and just create that culture of winning, that same culture that I felt like, like how we in Cleveland when I came up and it was like these starting pitchers set the bar. You know, it was already like the 10 innings, 5Ks was nothing to them or 5 innings, 10Ks was nothing to them. So it wasn't going to be a big deal if you came up and did it. Once you start setting that bar higher and higher, you just start changing the culture and the other guys are going to just reach for that little extra gear and reach for more. Um, without you in the mix at the moment, how do you think this group stacks up to the Dodgers right now? I mean, I thought I thought we matched up with them just fine last year. And I think this year, uh, there should be no doubt in anyone's mind when they go in that field that we have every bit of personnel on this side of the this side of the field to, to beat them. And I just I think everybody has that mindset, and I think this is, everyone's a little more comfortable with that mindset now too. And now that you've had some time around the team, I'm, I'm wondering just what what has struck you about uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. Um, aside from just sort of the obvious talent. Oh, I mean, he's just, he's a ball player, man. It's not like, it's not about the, how many pictures he can get taken. It's not about, I don't know how much retweets or the, it's, it's about winning baseball games and having fun doing it. And that's everybody in this clubhouse. It's just cool to see everyone on that same collective page where it's, yeah, personal accolades are cool. And you, you know, you have to, you know, do certain things to, you know, feed your family. Everyone understands that, but it's just, way different here man it's like a way different vibe in a, for a big league clubhouse it's everyone's here feels like a good travel baseball team we're all just trying to win ball games at any cost no matter if someone's 0 for 4 and someone's 5 for 5 it doesn't matter who that is just someone pick up the torch and pass it to the next guy thanks man yeah no i actually had the the privilege of like kind of like going out there and watching them and working with them uh last year before the playoffs and uh, uh on the field in san diego and he's 
I mean, he's got every bit of talent to be one of those guys that's a household name, one of those guys that's front and rotation guys. And uh, uh, this this spring training, I really you really started to see with his fastball. I mean, his fastball is just jumping out his hand, and just see he, his body's moving a lot more free. I think that's what he's getting back to. Is I think he got into a little mold where he's getting kind of mechanical and getting in his head a little bit, and now you can kind of see him start to flourish and start to really like understand like, yo, I got I got the stuff to be here. I got the stuff to win at this level, and you're starting to see that kind of come into play now. Mike, you were obviously dealing with some some stuff late last season. You try to pitch through it, and obviously the goal is to win in the postseason, and you, you want that chance. But looking back now, how, how do you reflect on that decision to kind of try and push through it, given where you en- ended up with it? Uh, I mean, I 100% would have done it again. I mean, that's uh, there's a bunch of cool things that come along with playing in the big leagues, but like, there's nothing that's more fun than that postseason where every single person's out there you know, that's willing to die for the man next to him. And just throughout a 162-game season, it's hard to really, like, keep that same kind of energy and you're not going to get the same kind of talent. But, like, that's why I wanted to play the game is I want to be the best in the world. And there's no better stage than that playoff game when everyone's at their top of their talent, their interest is fully involved in winning, and really uh, just that adrenaline rush and that real pure purity of baseball's back in that playoffs. So, like, I'll do anything just to pitch in the playoffs again.